Enjoy episode one, what is hypnosis? This video is going to be very unique in terms of the training and uh, we're going to do the, uh, the video series and episodes with all kinds of different hypnotists around the country and I think you're going to find this real fun, uh, really invaluable and really, um, you're going to get a lot of learning out of this. So um, the idea of this episode one is uh, I contacted a bunch of random hypnotists. I asked them, um, you know, I'm doing a video series and I want you to answer this question, what is hypnosis? And I want you to answer it just off the top of your head and just what you think hypnosis means to you. I gave them no other steer, I gave them no other briefing other than just answer the question, what is hypnosis? So I got a bunch of replies and I think you'll find it really interesting just the responses I got. What is hypnosis? Well. It's Anthony Cools here. Richard Barker asked me to say my opinion about what it is exactly and what exactly it is nobody knows but in my opinion is that it's an extended state of focus that allows people to be very suggestible but on top of that it makes me a shit ton of money. <laughs> money. That's my brother Cameron. He's been with the show for 16 years. Uh, hypnosis, nobody can prove that it exists or it does not exist because it cannot be hooked up to a machine and say, oh, that person's in an altered state of thinking. So until that happens, does it exist, does it not exist? All I know is that I've been doing it for 20 years and having a blast doing it for 20 years and making people do some pretty darn toot and ridiculous things. Like, for example, these girls, see, they, they just came from church. Right, and, and that's what the—that's what they're wearing. But they're all hypnotized. But they're does it exist or not? Does it exist or not? Who knows? Uh, Christina, what's your opinion? What is hypnosis? No. <laughs> See, she's hypnotized too. Richard, anything for you, buddy? Hey, Matt Hale, down here in Western Australia, and I've been asked, "What is hypnosis?" Uh, well, for me, I pretty much. It's kind of saying stuff and people doing it uh, with a lot less resistance than they otherwise normally would. Uh, although really, in the, in the big picture, for me, hypnosis is really just the, it's the, kind of the vehicle that allows me to, to surf every day, sit on a beach every day if I need to. There's not much surf today, unfortunately. Um, head to the cafe when I want to travel and uh, probably have the most fun I've ever had, but actually at work as well. So it's short and sweet, but that's really just the basics for me. I hope that helps. It's Jay Noblezada with htglive.com and I want to define hypnosis for you. Richard Barker asked me to make a video telling what I thought hypnosis was or how I would define hypnosis. And it's quite an, an interesting question because I think that most hypnotists couldn't give you an exact answer. And if they did, it might just be a uh, sort of a, a memorized thing that's sort of easy, easy to say. And as you, as you learn hypnosis, you're going to pretty much f figure out... Uh, you know, what's good for you. You're going to just say something that uh, <laughs> sounds good. But um, if you want a definition, dictionary, a dictionary definition of it, you could just look it up and, and try to memorize that. But in my personal experience, hypnosis has been nothing more than um, a vehicle and a tool for communicating with someone and connecting with someone in, in, in a way uh, that's effective. Um, and... Whether they know it's happening or not, you can use hypnosis in a way that's very, very effective. 
But, uh, you know, how exactly would I define hypnosis? You know, what would I exactly say? Well, one of the things that I, I like to just do, and it's, it's easy for me to do, is just say I don't know. And uh, I don't really know, and that's because it's the truth. And I can be as transparent as I want about that because I don't truly understand what hypnosis is. When I'm on stage and I'm performing, I still don't understand why people are, are doing exactly uh, what they're doing. Uh, I don't purely understand everything scientific about it, but I don't believe like I, that I need to know. Um, I don't think that it affects my, my performance, and I don't think that it affects uh, the success that I'm achieving uh, in my career. But uh, I think that for a lot of people that want to try to figure it all out, compartmentalize everything and fit it all into a box, um, that could be the death of you. That could be something very uh, detrimental to your study and to your creativity with hypnosis. You see, on the other side of, of um, security and knowing and uh, the satisfaction of knowing, the other side of that is uh, this variety and this unknowing, the unknown of what hypnosis could be and what it can be. And that to me is absolutely fascinating and that to me is absolutely hypnotic because if I could ever figure out what hypnosis is, I would probably get really tired of it and get really bored of it. And uh, it's been how many years now? Uh, many, many years, and I'm still fascinated with it because the results that I get through hypnotherapy through uh, uh, and performing on stage and even with one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's just been a variety of different things. Um, the different people that I meet, the uh, different results that I get, um, you know, you'll have one show that's, you know, okay, and then you'll have another show that's absolutely great. Even though you say the same things, you feel the same way, you do the exact same show, but the results are different. So uh, I don't think there's any one definition, any one set way to, 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 you know, to sort of define hypnosis. You can define it any way you want. You can say whatever you want. But I truly believe that I, I don't know, and we really don't know. And... Um, What's most important is how you're going to connect with other people and what you're going to do with hypnosis. You know, what are you going to do with hypnosis, uh, especially this year, being at the, you know, the new year? Or what are you going to do with it? Are you going to create a, a, a business out of it? Or are you going to change your own life with hypnosis? Um, what's it going to be? And, um, you know, we do that through connecting with people. And... If you can effectively connect with your audience, with your clients, uh, then you can deliver the information that you want. You can speak to them in a way that moves them and transforms their life. And when it comes to hypnosis, uh, you know, the method or the vehicle for communicating with someone else and enabling them to change, you know, that, that importance sort of dissolves because it's not so much the type of vehicle. It's just the effectiveness of it and how we get there um, doesn't seem to matter. It's the, the, the fact that we get there, the fact that we are able to help other people, connect with other people, and change people's lives. So Richard Barker asked me, what is hypnosis to me? Without using technical terms and without going into a lot of jargon, hypnosis is that state of relaxation. It's that moment right between asleep and awake. It's when your subconscious, your imagination, your creativity comes to the forefront. And it's where all of your day-to-day -day consciousness, your troubles, your worries, your self-consciousness, and your concern fade into the background. To me personally, hypnosis is a great way to show people what they're truly capable of. How in any given moment, the shyest person can be a rock star on stage. How somebody who feels they can't speak in public can stand up in front of a group of people and do extraordinary things. Hypnosis is that great moment where imagination takes priority over all of our past beliefs of things that we cannot do. Hi, Jonathan Chase, the hypnotist. Three things happen to you when you become hypnotized. First and foremost, you feel wonderfully focused, wonderfully internally focused, focused on your imagination, on, on your internal reality. 
Secondly, your 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 conscious filter, the, the, the thing that sits between your subconscious, your imagination and the outside world, your intellect, gets put to one side for a moment. So um, while you're hypnotized, that that may be observing it, that process, that mental process may be observing and it may be watching you and watching what's going on, but it's not actually involved in in what's going on. It's not involved in the beliefs or the behaviours that you're running at the time. And and thirdly, and most importantly certainly to the stage hypnotist, what happens is your inhibitions aren't just lowered, they don't just go away, but for the time that you're being hypnotized while your conscious mind's over here, you as the hypnotist become the hypnotist, that's the person being hypnotized, you become the hypnotist, conscious and their conscience. So you're creating the reality, you're giving suggestions and you do that by giving suggestions. Now a suggestion is, is the induction, the creation, that's all the word induced means, and to create a situation where you are creating a, a, a thought, a belief or a behaviour in another human being, in, in somebody else, and they are responding to that, they, they're running that, that script that you've given them, and they're doing that without looking at what the conscious mind's doing. So they're just, they're just working on their emotions and their imagination, and, and, and that's what happens when when you become hypnotized now normally if this were a stage show i would say a little white light at this point because i would say that you can't be forced cajoled or persuaded to do anything that goes against your deeply held morals beliefs or principles that's not entirely true as i said you become their conscious you become their conscience and while that happens you are more or less in control of what they do and more or less in control of uh, what they think, what they hear, what they see, what they feel. And that internal reality being created by somebody else is, um, is what hypnosis is. Hypnosis is also a word that describes the, the communication skills, the art of creating that situation in somebody else and leading them to it and making use of the fact that, that a lot of people can be easily suggested. The only time you're likely to see anything that comes close to hypnosis in a natural state is when you are drunk or when you are high on drugs, when, when that conscious part of you is, is put to one side and your subconscious is running. Now that means that being a hypnotist and hypnotizing people comes with a huge amount of um, a responsibility. As I said, you're their conscious and you're their conscience. On a neurological level, I don't know about all this research that apparently has been done on alpha levels and beta levels and delta levels and all that that we hear the hypnotherapy teachers spewing out all the time. The fact is that when you try and do the research on the research, you find that there's not a lot of it going on and a lot of it is just myth. But I've, I've taught a couple of psychologists, one an emirate professor of psychology in Singapore, and I asked them, and they said that in their opinion, there's no difference between you when you're hypnotized and you when you're awake, apart from the fact that you don't have that conscious, that conscience, um, filtering out everything that comes from your subconscious mind. So, what's hypnosis? Hypnosis is a connection and a condition. It's a connection between the hypnotist and the hypnotee and it's the condition that that creates in the hypnotee. You want to know what hypnosis means to me. Well, can you see that in the background? See that beautiful blue ocean? A gorgeous, gorgeous, fantastic water like that. A nice sunset. I don't know if you've caught that right there. Isn't that fantastic? Okay. Hypnosis to me means cruising anywhere and everywhere in the world. I mean places I never would have dreamed of visiting or even that I would have the opportunity to visit these places. <laughs>
Ah, so nice. And getting to hypnotize wonderful people from all over the world, of all ages, of all backgrounds, everyone who really understands how wonderful and fantastic hypnosis can really be. And I'm about to show you the showroom here in a second. Usually we get about 30, 40 people up on stage. Theater Hall is about 700, 800 people. And it's all about having fun, having a great time. Usually I say, volunteers, come on down. And they are up there on stage, ready to have fun and have a good time. I'm making my way to the theater right now. We're getting ready for our wonderful sail away here. So, uh, all right, we're going inside here now. Just one second and I will show you what hypnosis means to me. Okay, can you see that right back there? Oh, we're going into the theater. Beautiful, absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna turn this around here a second so you can see. Here we go. There's the stage. There's the empty seats. In a few hours, they will be filled with fans of hypnosis, people who want to participate and have a wonderful time and experience their own journey to the inside of their mind, a place that only they can go to, to have fun, to make changes, to have all their dreams and goals fulfilled and come true. I hope you can appreciate hypnosis as much as I do and all of my wonderful volunteers do. All right, thanks for asking. Hypnosis is a way to tap into the subconscious mind, to rewrite the inner dialogue, to break bad habits, achieve your goals, and live the life of your desire. In a stage show, we tap into your creative potential by relaxing you, building your confidence, and turning you into the star of the show. Hope that helps. Do you know how they train elephants? When an elephant is a baby, one end of a chain is fastened to one of its back legs. The other end is secured to a stake that is driven deep into the ground. For the first few days after he is chained, the baby elephant will try in vain to free itself. After a few days, the baby elephant, believing that escape is impossible, will just start to rock back and forth. It is being conditioned to believe that it has limits and can only go as far as the chain will allow. When the elephant is grown, it can easily snap the chains and just, or just pull the stake from the ground with very little effort, but it has been conditioned to believe that it can't, so it doesn't even try. There have been documented cases where in circus fires, full-grown elephants would stand and burn to death when all they had to do was walk away from the flames. They would stand and die a horrible and painful death rather than let go of their mistaken belief that they had limitations. They had been conditioned to believe that they could not, therefore they did not. Most people have a stake in a chain. They have been conditioned to believe that they aren't worth very much and probably will never accomplish very much, so they don't. We are conditioned to believe that we are at the mercy of life and circumstance and really have no control over our destinies. Mental chains are stronger than chains forged of steel. To give you an idea of how strong these chains can be, many years ago, I was the director at the Atlanta Hypnosis Institute in Atlanta, Georgia. A young lady, 19 years old, was brought in by her parents. We were their last resort. When this young lady was a child, she was out riding her bicycle and was struck by a car. She was rushed into the emergency room where she was attended by the finest doctors in Atlanta. Her legs had been broken and she was cut and bruised. But her surgeries had gone really well. She had healed perfectly. But still, all of these years later, she was still in a wheelchair. The doctors had no explanation. The bones had healed, the muscles and nerves were all fine. Yet she couldn't walk. Using regression hypnosis, we took her back to the day of the accident. And this is what we found. She had been given a sedative to knock her out because she was in so much pain. A student nurse, seeing the broken and bloody child, made this comment. 
Oh my God, that poor child. She will never walk again. The young lady's conscious mind had been sedated with the drugs, but her ever aware subconscious mind heard those words, believed them, and acted upon them. We removed those crippling suggestions and made them invalid, and within a few weeks with physical therapy, this young lady was up and walking. Think about that. She had missed dating and proms and sports and the most wonderful years of her youth because of a mistaken idea that her mind had accepted. Mental chains are forged from years of incorrect thinking. Where does this thinking begin? It's a fact that in this country, the greatest country on the face of the earth, this the land of opportunity, only 5% of the population ever achieve any degree of success. That means that 95% of the people that we come into contact with are still prisoners of their own stakes and chains. So the people that we listen to, probably our loved ones and friends, haven't discovered the secret to success. See, understand this. Our minds are like fertile fields, and whatever is planted will grow. Negative defeatist thoughts will produce negative defeatist results. At birth, our mind is a blank. It's like a blank computer, and our friends and family are the programmers. As we grow older and our computer becomes more sophisticated, we can program it ourselves. But it's easier just to continue to let others do it for us or just keep running the same program over and over. We let other people program our computer. Other people control what goes into our gray matter. And how do you know that it's gray? It might be blue or green or purple. Well, it's, it's gray because that's what I've heard. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for episode two where we discuss the three most important things to know when learning hypnosis. We interview a whole bunch of new hypnotists in episode two. Take care, I'm Richard Barker, the incredible hypnotist. Looking forward to seeing you on episode two.